Here we will set up a scene for our look development. Here we have our chipmunk rig and inside is our rig that is animated. So the animation goes from binding pose to running. He stops, looks left, right, and then he continues. Here, what is important to mention is how the geometry is set it up for our look development. So the geometry comes from here, that's the skin, and we will set up two sets of UVs. One UV set would be for groom, and that will be in one UDIM. The next what we are doing here, we are setting up the PREF. The PREF is just a copy of position uh, values into the attribute that is called PREF. We will later use this attribute for procedural shading. And the next thing here is a second UV set. And this UV set is for our look dev, for texturing multi UDIM. We have it in the first row. The zero row is reserved for the eyes we are setting up the name so this is the name that we will have later in usd we do some cleaning of attributes and outputting the groom because the groom will have the geometry that doesn't have any animation and any skinning and here we are doing deformation and output so that's very simple so here we have animation and here for the groom we don't have any animation. So when we go out, you will see if I select here the UEs. So that would be the eyes. This is the skin. And this is the small part that was missing on the geometry, the corruncula. So that's where I looked at why we did eyes that big. Because we also want to use some procedural ramps that they go from the center out. There is no other reason. Otherwise, this all could be in two Udims. That's our character that has animation. So here we are extracting that geometry from uh, from the character rig. We are converting our UV1 to ST. That's our skin. And here we are converting our UV that is a groom to ST groom. It's a texture coordinate attribute. And then we are doing subdivision and some cleaning. So that's the end result that will go to the rendering. Subdivided. So this geometry here is just what will go into the USD output. That looks like that. And this one is low poly animation. So the next thing here, what we have, we are doing the same. We are taking here the geometry from a character, doing subdivision and then doing the our groom for the tail. Let me just show you that because this tail is stretched through the rig. The geometry that we are grabbing here doesn't have any transformation on it. It's a groom output. So that geometry would just look like that without any transformation. And then we do our guides, guide curves. And these guide curves are separate to a tail and a body because it's much easier for us to control just a feature of the tail and separately the whole body. And inside you will see that uh, what we have, we have some curves. They show that the direction of the groom and they are used later when the groom guides are applied to set up the direction in this way and then we have some breakups and those breakups are using some textures they are provided in a project so you can uh, go and see how they are painted to set up the length uh, and breakups differently on the character. I will not go too much into the detail. So that's all about uh, fur on the body and the same goes for the tail. And what else we have here? We have here in the next layer we have a animated character. So this one is completely animated and we will do the form using that one to deform our curves. So if I show you like this, it will just deform our guides. And here what we have some dynamics uh, and we baked those dynamics on the end. So they are now read from the folder and we calculate those dynamics from the T-pose towards so that uh, the interaction between curves creates nice transitions. Here we have our hair. The hair itself also has lots of breakups and you can look that more in detail by yourself. Here are also the textures that are used to do the breakup for the length, clumping, frizz, 
Again, some clumping. Very important on the end, what we are doing here. We are creating some attributes on these curves. This one is called curve UV. Very simple. And then we use that information to just extract the X value and store that in a curve U. And as you remember, we created a tool for our shading, the fur layering. And that tool uses curve U to do the rump from tip to root. Very we are changing the position of the color and the next thing here what we have we are copying the UV information from the skin onto the curves called ST and here we are copying ST groom also on the curves if we need that and do some cleaning and output we are not saving this onto the disk because when we save the USD, the USD itself will uh, cache out all our groom deformation. Here we are saving this one because later we will maybe want to uh, look our renders and dynamically change some value of the thickness uh, or maybe the number of the curves. Right now we are uh, we know that the chipmunk has a three million curves on uh, his body, but we also know that most of them uh, are undercoat and they are twice thinner and we don't want to go 3 million because it will be too much so we are going something in between 2 million and we are also setting up uh, the thickness to be a little bit thicker just to fill the gaps and here we have a tail here we have a whiskers so the whiskers are done a little bit different. We are extracting here the part of the snow where the whiskers would be. And then we are putting the guides on that and then deforming them with animation, caching out the dynamics of the hair. And here we are actually not creating the curves from the guides. We are just rendering the guides, setting up the thickness. So we are not generating the, the curves in between the guides. We are just setting the same for all of them, tail, body, and this guides the attributes UV curve to curve U and ST, UV1 to ST and UV to ST groom. Cleaning and out. So that's our geometry that we have, our chipmunk with animation. What we will grab in a stage would be this bottom part, the curves on the bottom and uh, this geometry here. Let's go to the stage. So here in a stage, we have uh, on top here some bounding boxes just to measure the chipmunk size. This smaller bounding box here represents the real size of a chipmunk in a unit scale. But because we got the character that is a little bit bigger and measuring this, we see that the character is twice bigger. That means that we will need to uh, measure the thickness of the hair to be twice thicker to correspond to this size currently. We are first creating a proxy here and you will see why later. So we have a geo uh, that we are grabbing from uh, body geo and setting up that into the asset proxy geo body. Just organizing our scene. This would be the eyes and the pieces of the eyes that we modeled there. Also coming from the object eyes group and this is the lid that is a part of the eyes also and then we are configuring this to purpose to be a proxy of all of these underscore geos. Why we are doing that? Because we don't want to load here the render geometry and the curves. Uh, we always want to look our OpenGL view as a proxy or guide. And then when we render, we will render what is in the render. It just optimize our workflow because here we can uh, scroll our character uh, much faster than uh, with the groom. And you will see why. So here we are doing the same, except that the this goes into render. So instead of proxy, it goes into the render. Here we are grabbing the fur. We are grabbing the body. This is a tail. And he is generating here now a groom for the body because it's not cached. And you will see later why we don't want to cache it right now. So that's the, the body. And then this is the whiskers. And then here we are setting a purpose to be render for all of them and setting some uh, curve properties 
is to be pinned cat room and cubic so we have nice curvy curves here we are configuring some scopes and on the end here we are saving all that into the our project as asset version 001 as a usd that becomes here a usd file now when we saved our character uh, into the usd and when we move the animation we can see the character here and if we go to the render he will ro load the curves we don't wait for uh, curves to be generated a little bit time to load them from the usd and we have this switch here to actually say we want to now see the character baked or we want to dynamically maybe change some values in the thickness and the length in a, in a groom and see how that looks in a render here we have uh, materials set it up for whiskers fur skin eye cornea in and out eye iris eye lens fur right now is very simple we have just our uh, fur shader thickness scale to 0 5 and all these values are coming from the preset for the mouse nothing else specifically there set it up and we have assignments we are assigning every material to the corresponding geometry we have our tool that we created for the turntable and lights we have our camera we will talk more about the camera setup in the next session we have some presets of the cameras here and we have some uh, render geometry settings specifically for the groom where we are setting up our uh, limits for bounces uh, high enough so the hair can get correctly rendered and also caustics and we will look more into the details later and here we have uh, just a uh, render settings and some metadata that we want to put into the our renders and read that later in our compositing and that's the render output on this side we are just setting up the render specifically for our reference spheres so if you look through the render camera and we need to enable our render spheres like my chart that will just be rendering a pass of spheres for our compositing so for every every hdr that we have in our setup we we will have corresponding HDR also rendered to just show us how the environment looks. And here we have our chipmunk with the ground and all other properties set it up through the render camera. 